Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Pause of the Multiverse Season 2. We're an unofficial Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala. I will be portraying the world of Ravnica. And with me, as always, my three dear friends, portraying the characters navigating that world. My name is Jeppy. I play Illipel, who was once an aspiring discus athlete, but has now become a seasoned frisbee thrower. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. I play Clork, the Is It Goblin engineer, who stands before you but a humble minion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I'm Andy. I play Alwyn, the Golgari druid, and, you know, really just an easy target for the illusion school of magic. What can I say? Those illusions, they will get you. You know, always throw a pebble first to make sure it's a real thing. Anyhow, uh, if you've been having some fun listening to our show... We just want you to help us out and give us some engagement. Rate us and review us. Come hang out with us in our Discord. Come follow us on Twitter. You know, do all of that stuff and help us propagate our little creation here. Spread the gospel. You can do the most fun thing of all, which is uh, give us money so we (laughs) can continue making these things. Just make us more acolytes. More acolytes, Acolytes. You motherfuckers. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, I think that's enough of that. Let's uh, let's get into it. All right, um, let's get into tonight's show with our, our recap quiz show where the game was last week and the points don't matter. We need buzzers. I'm officially buzzing in. Okay, you can make a buzz <laughs> noise. You can go, I, w- I won't do that, thanks. Okay, Andy. Yeah, Illipel interrogated the fairy. Using suggestion. It told us everything. That was very successful, and... We were trying to get them to take us to their, like, dead drop. And then a fucking, like, vampire showed up. We uh, we chased this vampire who had some sort of spell over Cassiel, our person in question. And uh, so we pursued through Zonat 7 into a library? Correct. And faced off against this very annoying Demir vampire. <laughs> Yeah, Andy was a Andy was a spider the whole time, and he was carrying a fairy under his arm. <laughs> That's right, yeah. one of the uh, one of the assassins. Andy, I, I don't really want to recap this, but what happened to the fairy? You know what? Well, let's get to the fight first. Oh, okay, we fought the vampire, and uh, Cassiel laid there motionless. I think for most of the time, uh, we beat him up. I got knocked out for the maybe eighth time this campaign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was fine. Um, Alwyn beat his head in. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And he turned into dust. All of these details are accurate. The assassin got away. The assassin uh, did not get no, away. No, it did not get What? Andy. Oh, no, it, that's right. Oh, shit. I'm strike, a point strike for that. that. Strike that. Oh, no. <laughs> docking points. Um, the assassin got murked while we were busy fighting. I mean, mm. by murked, you mean... Th- th- murked implies someone killed it that wasn't you by just neglect. <laughs> no, see, I was under the impression that it had been killed. I'm going to verify that impression. Yeah. Oh. See, it wasn't that I... it just... It wasn't oh. that it failed death saves. It's that another assassin killed it so it wouldn't would stop talking. Oh, because oh. you left it unattended. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I, I, I thought, I, I I thought read... you just left it... No, I... I thought you left it unstable and unconscious and it died. Andy always brought it to unconsciousness non-lethally, so it was stable. Right. It appeared to have been killed. All right, so after you fought the vampire, what happened? Oh, we went to see my favorite guy. Oh my we god, see, that's uh, right. We took the uh, Horgan Glorgs or whatever taxi service to <laughs> the office Those of the Guildback. Fucking goblins. And uh, then we saw Niv Mizzet and Clark fawned over him. Oh, man. It was so good. (laughs) I feel like if I give you points for that, that that seems unfair. For praising your... uh, For for praising my accent. (laughs) You're the DM. You can do whatever you want. He told us he could undo the memory charm, but it would take time even for someone as sort of omnipotent as him. Yes. Two weeks. I'd also like to remind you that you did pick up a magical cloak from the vampire that you killed. Gave it to Illipel. Yep. What does it do? I didn't even write it down. After you rest, I'll share the details with you. You don't know yet. I'm just going to put cloak. You called it a cloak of daggers. Correct. It's cloak of daggers. Cloak of daggers. It's a good name. Okay. Andy and Jimmy, you both have three points. I'm going to give Andy the inspiration die because I gave it to Jimmy last time. And with that, uh, let's begin where we left. Wait a minute. 
Is the is the inspiration dice coming from where the points don't matter? Because I should have gotten that shit last game. I That's stopped last game. <laughs> it felt unfair to give you an inspiration die last time because you you monopolized the conversation. Ah, nothing wrong with a good monopoly, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of monopolies, Illipel is headed to the Cathedral of Orjova uh, to speak with their benefactor. Illipel, it occurs to me, did we not slay a fellow guild member of yours back when we were fighting alongside the Irreglas? Aren't you worried? I trust that my contacts within Orjova will be a little less short-sighted than many other guild members' middle management. I'm surprised. I would have thought you would have been less eager to trust such conniving company, but you're the expert. My trust may appear doled out in generous portions, but I promise you, it is meted out meagerly. We wait for your return. So, you head to the cathedral? The imposing gothic arches of Orjova leer down at you, their gilded filigree glinting harshly in the sunlight. You pass beneath the sacred icon of the golden sun into the main nave. Your footsteps echo on the stone, and you can hear the gloomy chant of a choir fill the space from above. But you're not here to pay religious observance. You slip out a side door, up a spiraling stone sk- sta- spiraling stone staircase. Why did I use so much alliteration in this description? To the upper levels, where the rectories of luxury can be found. And you head to an office with a inscription above the door, uh, sort of a placard, Gerevash and Egorch Wealth Management Services. <laughs> Cool. You step into the office. It is a very fine office. There are gilded and onyx solar icons of the Orjova all over the place. It sort of reeks of excess wealth with gaudy objet dart sitting on white marble and ebony desks. And you're sort of made to wait on a little velvet bench. And eventually you're called into Garavash's office. You see his portly figure tented in a dark velvet robe with gold trim. His stern, wrinkled eyes survey you from beneath a black cowl. A large gold choker glimmers opulently beneath his jowls, and his fingers lace together to display a wealth of precious stones and metals around each one. Sol auro benedicte. Sol negro benedicte. Amen. Please, Ilapel, take a seat. We have things to discuss. Ever thankful for your courtesy to invite me in. I'll take a seat. Master Verona relayed the unique situation of yours to me. You are now serving the office of the Guild Pact. Indeed I am. And while that has shifted my focus from more tactical execution on the Orzov's wishes, I do trust that the work I'm doing on behalf of the Guild Pact will still manage to find a benefit for the Guild nonetheless. Hmm, I wonder that it will, my junior. Tell me, what do you think of the Guild Pact? I think beneath the weight of such an institution sits lofty goals. Hmm. And while I am ever the optimist, I do wonder, though do not challenge whether or not those goals are attainable. That being said, the task with which I have been assigned to is to be executed by a small squad of capable individuals. Hmm. Just three of us, all under different guild banners, and I suspect that the importance of this task could have easily been doled out to a wider unit, specifically one per guild, and that wasn't the case. I wonder if there is some ability to leverage this work in favor of the Orzhov. I would keep your senses sharp for such an opportunity. Too long, I think. The guild pact has kept us in a state of balance. All these powers balanced, yes, but power does not want to be balanced. Power wants structure, order. Power needs to rest in the correct hands. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree. My time in the second precinct, however, has taught me that the correct hands are seldom the same hands that take it. In this case, however, he'll look Garavash up and down. I think we've found a delightful merger of the hands that take and the hands that should have. Your flattery is noted. So, is there a reason you have come to me beyond this information? I had hoped to confirm with you a message I sent from one 
Tomek, I believe was the name. Yes, Master Vrona. Did he share with you other details besides my joining of the Guild Pact? As per your agreement, he informed me of your particular plight. The reason you are now... in debt. Ah, well, yes, my debts are a peculiar matter indeed, though. I hope that my time here in the Orzhov can grant me enough trust with you to say that my debts have never followed me for very long. That being said, I am curious to know if he shared any details regarding the task I was to carry out for Orzhov the day of the invasion. You already knew all you needed to know of that, and the time for such a task has passed. We now look to the future. Do you believe this person will continue to be a problem for you, this unilgast? I do not know if her work is serving to undermine me or the Orzhov, and at this point even her own guild. I have looked into the matter somewhat. She has taken up the same type of business that she was in before. Hospitality. Has she done this as a free agent? No, your information is correct. She has joined with the Golgari. And her new venture? Is this in service of the Golgari? It is unclear. It rests in something of a neutral territory in the Undercity. A common ground where all those denizens may gather. So the question remains, unless of course you have the answer. What would she stand to benefit by doing what she's done? In my mind, I can only think of a finite number of possibilities. Of course, possibility one, to undermine me and my work as some sort of vendetta against me. I will be quite transparent with you, we do have a history. That being said, I know this woman better than anyone else. Her aspirations are for more than some small corner of the world. I suspect that whatever venture she's taken up in the Undercity is not the last we will hear of her, and I have Yet to know for certain, but I believe there are some whose minds are being poisoned within the Golgari Swarm. I'd suspect she may be capable. Do you believe this venture could be turned to our profit? Well, that's a simple question. Any venture in Ravnica can be turned profitable for the right people, as long as I am involved. However, to make this venture profitable, Anel cannot be part of the picture. And that, I assure you, is not just the result of some sort of blood feud, but the careful calculations of someone that has seen the damage she is capable of. What are you proposing to do about this? For now, I still believe that my business on behalf of the Guild Pact will yield some sort of favor for the Orzhov. Reputable standing in a wider network. A reputation that we may need to leverage should we want to move on this particular level we are speaking of. That being said, I do suspect I will be visiting the Undercity perhaps the next couple of days. Even tonight, I could scout this place out. What information do you have on it? Its name is the Wilted Petal. Oh, <laughs> you fuck. Ah. It is located somewhere beneath the third or fourth precinct. Anel Gas certainly has a way with nomenclature. It appears both of you may have had some difficulty completely letting go of the past. But as I said, we look to the future. A future where power is in the right hand. And he reaches into his robe, and he pulls out a loop of metal, and he passes it over to you. Look to the future, Ilapel. Thank you, your opulence. I will do my best to quell my flaws. Can you tell me what this ring of metal is? Yeah, it's a dual loop of metal. It can be worn over the ring and middle fingers. Okay. Plus 25 damage to unarmed attacks, I'm assuming? As you put it on, you can feel that it's magical if you put it on. Yep, I do. In front of him. Yeah, you put it on, you can feel that it's magical, though you don't have access to, like, detect magic or identify or anything like that. You can make a base arcana check. Oh, cool. Fifteen. This ring is made of a metal that you have never seen before. It almost looks like mercury if it were solid, and the way it's been crafted, you think it's made with some form of artifice. Okay. Okay. Until you take some time with it, you don't know more. I think that's it. I'll give a courteous bow and leave and make my way back to my friends. Sure. You make your way out, unmolested, out onto the street where your friends are waiting. <laughs> that was a fucking option. <laughs>
<laughs> There's always a chance. <laughs> you never know with Jeffy. It's Ravnica. Honestly. Hang on, let me insert some percentile dice. Oh no. Yeah. Pass, please. 69 angry ghosts. No. Nice. Clark, you think they're still running their mouth in there? Or have they been killed yet? <laughs> what would Clark know about this place? <laughs> so, they like present as a religious cult. And maybe they were that a long time ago. But now they're more of a bank and they kind of just go through the motions of all of this mysticism to obfuscate the fact that they're giving people bad deals. Got it. Don't take a loan from the Orzhov is kind of street wisdom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe we should call it soon. Well, they don't look dead yet. I tell you, your business went well. Ah, yes. A flurry of words to appease the would-be gods of Ravnica. I suspect I may have some business to attend to in the Undercity, but it takes a backseat to the companionship that you two provide and the ongoing efforts we make on behalf of the Guild Pact. Shall we? All right. Follow me. And we make for the Undercity. Can we get to Stonehaven before the end of the day, or is it something that we should rest first and then go? You can get to Stonehaven by the end of the day. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we make for the nearest entrance into the Undercity. Well, you just passed over Deadbridge Gorge. It's quite close and actually rather close to home. Roll me a survival check to see how you make it through. You can do this with advantage. This is a trek you've made before. Cool, 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 cool. 21. Yes, absolutely. You know this way well, and after a excruciatingly slimy hour trudging through the caverns and worm trails of the Undercity, you find yourselves in a massive cavern. Oh, yes. A stone bridge stretches over a chasm that drops down below the edge of your vision. On the other side of the bridge, a weathered stone castle rests atop a ledge, its gray walls creeping with moss and ivy. As you approach the gates, a rusted iron portcullis groans open to reveal a verdant courtyard dotted with eerie, lifelike statues. <laughs> I lower my hood as we approach. Do I see anybody on either the bridge or the outer wall? There's probably a a person on watch okay. who would note your approach to open the portcullis for you. Great. Welcome to Stonehaven. And we enter. All right. You enter. There's this outer courtyard and then there's an inner gate. Presuming you go through that too. Yeah, I basically want to go straight for Rena. Okay. You pass through the inner gates. The grim halls of this stately ruin are illuminated by glowing fungi protruding from the walls, filling the dank chill of the audience chamber you arrive in with an eerie glow. You do not see your mother there. You see the steward of the house. Uh, what is their name? Would I know it? You would know it. Okay. Let me make it up right now. Cool. It's odd. She's usually still in the receival chambers at this time of night. Where else would she be? She hasn't taken to scavenging in a long time, but I can't say for sure. You see the steward of the house, Pella, sitting where your mother would be. She mm. looks at you quite surprised. Hail, Pella. I've returned. Where is Rena? Svogthir's bones. It's good to see you. Your mother is not at home. She's on some business, but she should be back in the morning. Very well. I love this already. Who are these friends you've brought with you? Allow me to introduce them. This is... This is Illipel and Clark. They have swiftly become both fighting companions as well as first friends, as the three of us have been united under a task on behalf of the Guild Pact itself. Friends and comrades of Alwyn the Green Wolf, be welcome in Stonehaven. There. Ancient rites of hospitality observed. You'll leave here without being petrified, so long as you behave yourselves. Did you say that Pella was also a Gorgon? She's a human. Okay. It's probably pretty late by now. Yes. So I will give a modest bow to Pella and show the three of us to some quarters. There's mushroom stew on the hearth if you want. Alwyn can show you to the guest rooms. I'll be here if there's anything else that you might desire. Thank you, Pella. We'll see ourselves out. Anything else you'd like to do before you take a long rest? Unless there's anything that that Clork or Illipel want to converse about. Assuming that the three of us kind of just go and, and rest right away, I would like to slip out into the castle chambers to try and do something. Okay. But I'll, I would do that absolutely last. What's the room like that we're in to rest? It's an old room. Everything's a little rotten down here. 
Yeah, give us some real ass stank on this description here. <laughs> All the linens are a little moth-eaten. There's sort of half-decayed tapestries hanging on the walls. This place was probably once a grand castle for a feudal lord, but it has since sunk beneath the earth. Not much of its grandeur remains, but the rooms that you're appointed are comfortably sized if the amenities are somewhat decayed. Mm. As we sort of round past a central corridor, we come to what was once both my brother and I's room. And you can see a large garden of various mushrooms and fungus and vines and possibly aggressive or predatory plants that have taken up room in this space that hasn't been occupied by either one of us in a number of years. I pass by where there was once a door, but now it's just kind of an open entryway and pointing in. Might seem strange down here in this cave, but I spent my entire childhood growing up in that room when I wasn't out scavenging. That explains a lot about you. I'm sure it does. Half of those mushrooms I brought back myself from out in the wild. I don't know if Clark sees what I see, but I think it does explain a lot about you to have grown up in the foundation of such grand regality. Certainly while it has taken its time to wither under a slow decay, it has given you and perhaps your brother much time to think about what came before and given you the sense of respect and loyalty that I see on a daily basis lately in your presence. I sort of sour my face when they bring up my brother, opting not to correct them. There's no need to flatter me in my own home, Ilpel, as hard as it may be to believe. We're just a lesser house among the swarm. This castle rests on just the outskirts of the entire Gogori Dominion. There are far grander, far more regal places. The Difkarn and the rest of the Gorgons call their own homes. More regal than here? Impossible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Some, like, sloppy goop falls down from yeah, the ceiling. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And one of these, like, little Venus flytrap things just fucking catch it. Yeah, and uh, Absolutely. Oh, just because something more regal exists elsewhere doesn't mean your quiet corner of the world isn't worth living in. Every man's house is his castle. Something like that. Makes you wonder why some abandoned theirs. The thought hasn't left my mind. Come now, let's get some rest. No need to dwell on said truth. Indeed. And I show them to some guest rooms. After which, I go to my room. Just look about and see if anything has been changed in the couple of weeks since I've been gone. Seeing the few things that I actually own myself kind of still in their places. I've set down my poisons and herbs and various things that I've collected into various containers and chests and things strewn about my room. And then after a little while, when I think it's the middle of the night, I would like to venture out into the castle. Sure. Can you just tell me what it is you're planning to do? I want to go to Rena's room. Okay, you can do that. Great. So being that I know this building very well, I want to be careful and quiet but I don't want to give the sense that I'm doing something that I probably shouldn't do. I'm going to say roll that into stealth. 25. Yeah, no, no one sees you as you slink through the castle. Not even yours, the Night Watch troll. I'm going to need a spelling on that. Y-O-R-J. Nice. I'm not looking to do anything nefarious at all. I simply <laughs> want to poke about her chambers to see if I can see... If there are any letters, any messages, anything pertaining to Edric, or anything pertaining to maybe where she's gone. Make an investigation check as you enter your mother's room. Flat 17. Okay. You go into a room. It's fairly simple, despite sort of living in the hollowed out shell of this once sturdy place. She hasn't done anything to really restore its grandiosity. There's a simple desk that you rummage through for a bit. There are a few messages dealing with house and guild business, standard places that you've been searching for things, new pathways that have opened up due to worm migration, but... Ah, the worms are migrating again. I love the time of year. <laughs> you actually would see a couple of summonses to Korozda. 
Mm -hmm. that bear the official guild seal. And that's the headquarters, right? Yes. It's not uncommon for a woman like your mother to be summoned to the maze of death. Awesome. Okay. Then I'll just return to my room and that'll be that. Very good. On his way, would he go back across his brothers and his room? I assume so, yes. Illipel will be waiting outside. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, nice. Illipel's waiting outside. You should be resting. We had a hard day yesterday. I should, and we did. I was hoping to catch you for a moment, and it seemed as though you were in quite a hurry, and I wanted to be respectful of that. What's on your mind, Illipel? I have a fear, and I'm hoping you can help me shake it off. It may have to do with Edric, but I am not certain at this point. You keep bringing them up. Out with it. Illipel will look into the room. When did it happen? When did he betray you? Exactly. How many days has it been since the day of the invasion? Quick maths. 58. Okay. 51 days as the sun rises. Ah, 51 days. Do you know what his motivations may have been? It's the only thing he told me. Before he left us for dust. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge and power. I understand you don't want to think more about it than you have to. And I will respect that. So please tell me if I'm going too far. You know Edric better than anyone. Would he be the type to pursue knowledge and power for his own benefit? At such a cost? This feels to me quite out of character. Mm Mmm. Okay. (laughs) Alright. Okay. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> okay. I see what you. There's, I see what the two of you are doing so here. Much... I see what the two of you well, here. Uh, okay. May not be the. Clearly, t- there there have been some private messages had between the two of you, motherfuckers. <laughs> there also may not have been. There may not have been. I also know how your brain is working, and I love it right now. <laughs> Just gonna make some notes. I cross my arms. I lean my back up against a cold and damp stone wall. I take a deep breath. That moment has been going through my head constantly, and ever since I've been asked by everyone I know, my own mother and all of my contacts in the swarm, that I have to be the one to bring him in, because I know him best, and he's my brother. But as well as I know him, as well as I knew him, there wasn't anything I wouldn't do for him, and there was nothing that he wouldn't do for me. So when you ask me, You ask me if I think he did it for himself, or for anything or anyone else. I pray to the living and the dead that it was something else. But I know what I saw. In that moment, he chose power over family. I'm sure it's painful to relive. The burden you carry is a great one, and the constant reminders from your family and fellow guildmates is surely not welcome. I will do my best to leave you alone on the matter, but... Just know that there is someone in the Golgari that has caught my attention. A woman recently joined your ranks by the name of Arnel Gast. My evidence is admittedly threadbare, but I have reason to believe she may be undermining many people. Not just within her own guild, your guild, but mine as well. There is that ever-optimist in me that clings to this minuscule hope that your recent pains and my current ills are one and the same. I hope that at some point in our journey together, we can uncover the truth. And I hope that behind it is Arnel Gast, because she is more than capable of this and much worse. It is late. I shouldn't have stayed up, but I felt it necessary, and I suppose I should just say I'm grateful for your friendship. I come off the side of the wall, and I put my hand on Elipel's shoulder. Thank you. Just then, Clark comes ambling down the hallway. <laughs> oh god, what is this gonna be? This could be anything. <laughs> Gloves are off, anything can happen. Oh hey fellas. Apologies, Mr. Clark, did we wake you? Uh, you got anything other than mushrooms here? I sure could go for a hot dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You would have somewhere preserved the Golgari favorite, Sausages of Dubious Origin. Oh, yes, of course. Well, Cloak, you're in luck. I bet I could wrestle you up a couple of sausages, and you might just like them, too. Sausages? No, a hot hot dog. You never had a hot dog before? You know, you like, you, well, you preheat your oven, right? And then you take a dog, any kind, and, uh, well, you can figure out the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Holy oh, shit! My. <laughs> oh, my God! 
Forgive me for not being accustomed to... Not being accustomed to goblin cuisine. It is rather unique. I'm sure we could wrestle you up a spider. Perhaps a giant centipede. <laughs> Ooh, I never had centipede before. What a surprise. <laughs> Will. I go into the mushroom garden and hunt down a giant centipede for caloric. Cool. Make me a survival check. Hell yeah, absolutely. That's only going to be an 11. Okay. You manage to catch one of the three centipedes you find. Hell yeah. I jab a little utility knife into it and bring it out and show it to Clark. Hot dog. Eh, that'll do. Clark just starts munching on it. Thanks, pal. <laughs> it's... So great. Make me a con save, Clark. Oh, no. A con save. <laughs> 17. Okay. You feel fine. It's an interesting flavor. Not anything like dog. Mm. Um, a bit stringy, but... Crunchy. Crunchy like lobster. You know to take the shell off the lobster, correct? You take the shell off the lobster? That's the best checks to, though. Well, Clark finishes up his centipede. This sucks up the last few legs like noodles. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, after your midnight stack, presuming there's nothing else, you all receive the benefits of a long rest. Fucking thank god. Illipel, question. Do you wear the ring while you sleep? Counter question. Should I? I know that's not a fair question, so I'll say yes, I do. Okay, yes you do. So, I'm going to tell you what your two new magic items do. You are wearing the Cloak of Daggers. It's a Cloak of Resistance. It gives you a plus one bonus to AC and saves. It can be used once per long rest to cast Cloud of Daggers at second level. Dang. And additionally, it can be used to make attackers believe they have been stabbed. When the wearer is attacked or forced to make a saving throw by a creature they can see, they can use their reaction to create an illusion of a retaliating dagger that deals 1d4, plus the wearer's charisma modifier, psychic damage. Int save versus wearer's spell DC negates. I made the Cloak of Daggers show it could go to either Illipel or Clark. Did you say Clark of Daggers? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it should have been Clark's! And then what's my ring do? The ring, okay. While worn, the ring can replicate the properties of the Enhanced Arcane Focus, Mind Sharpener, or Replicate Magic Item, Sending Stones, Artificer Infusions. The ring as a Sending Stone is connected to anyone else wearing one of these rings. It can only replicate one of these infusions at a time. You can choose to change which infusion it is each dusk. Also, because you wore the ring overnight, you hear in your mind, while you're dreaming, a voice. And I wrote this down because it's 25 words exactly. Welcome to the consortia. Oh my god, it's Wasabi. We're gonna be running this whole town soon. I give you a taste of power to wake your appetite for more. You could respond to that message if you like. Illipel will smirk in their sleep and continue the rest. Okay. You awaken with one warlock spell slot. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. That spell slot can be used to cast one of the following spells. It's a second level spell slot because of your level. Catapults, Detect Magic, Grease, Arcane Lock, Heat Metal, and Pyrotechnics. Fuck. That's a fun list. <laughs> and that's a spell slot that I have? Yes, it's treated as a warlock spell slot. And I get one per long rest? It's a warlock spell slot, so it comes back on a short rest. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Jesus, Illipel just got a fucking... I mean, upgrade. you know, I could yeah. fucking knock <laughs> out every it. game. <laughs> I, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Neat. Wow, that's sick. A warlock spell slot. Yes. Oh my god, what does that mean? What does that mean? Wow. We wouldn't fucking know unless they tell us, so... Probably never gonna know. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, you wake up and... I go see a friend is back. Okay, Alwyn, you see your adoptive mother, Rena, sitting upon a throne of knotted root wood, a pair of overgrown, zombified wolves resting at her feet. She wears practical leathers beneath a great cloak of deep green moss. The scaled tendrils sprouting from her head wriggle to life towards you as you enter her presence. The rotting wolves growl, but do not stir. I come into the center of the chamber and take a knee and bow my head. Svogfir's teeth, I'm glad you're home, son. 
Mother, forgive me. And I stand and, looking down, continue. I have been away from my home for too long, but in my travels I have come into the company of two very skilled fighters, companions, and friends. Please allow me to introduce Clark and Ilpel to the House of Stonehaven and the mother of wolves, Rinna. Pleasure to meet you. Are we supposed to bow? You don't have to bow. It's just a formality. It's considered polite, but you needn't. I'm not one to stand too much on formality. Okay, I won't then. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of kick Clark in the shin a little bit, like you should anyways. Ow. Illipel will bow. Clark bows his head. Cultured friends of my son, be welcome in Stonehaven. It's timely. You arrive when you do. We're running out of time to get your brother back. I've told you before, Idric is no longer my brother. Ye may not have a brother, but I still have two sons, and I'm asking the one that still listens to me to help the one that won't. Forgive me. This is difficult for all of us. There's nothing to forgive, but time is short. Vraska cannot be seen to show weakness. Because we've dawdled, we may not have much time to pull Edric from where he's been hiding before the Akron get to him. Would I know what the Akron are? Yes, you would know. I think I remember it. These are the assassins? Yes, they are the assassins of the swarm. And the title of Vraska is... She's the queen currently. Right. If the Hive Queen is willing to send her best assassins, then that means that they've found him. Is that right? Is that where you were? Trying to convince her not to do it? She nods. Her tendrils droop. Aye. But as I said, we don't have much time left. I know where he's hiding. A deep and ancient place. The sanctum of the primordial gyre. Would I have any idea what that is? You can roll history in a long shot. Okay. I got an unnatural 20. A dirty 20. I only got a six. Illipel, you've talked to a wide variety of people, learned some things. You know that the Gyreclade, one of the subdivisions of the Simic Combine, were once a shamanic, druidic, religious group, and one of their lost sacred places has this name, the Sanctum of the Primordial Gyre. I'm afraid I don't know where that is. It relates to the Simic Combine. I know little else. I should have guessed as much. Apparently, whatever you found was drawn to that place. You should come with us. I cannot. The eyes of the Queen are already upon me. Suspicious. This is why I wanted you to do this in the first place. If I act, it would be too conspicuous. And here I was, in all my time on the surface, starting to get romantic about the ways of the Undercity. I sort of spit off to the side. Oh, a new queen loves her cloak and daggers just as much as any other ill-gotten guild in this city. She does it that. Will you do it? Will you go to the sanctum and bring your brother home? Here where I can protect him from his own foolish decisions. I look to Illipel and Clark. I'm sorry to have gotten you ripped up in this, but I need your help. You have it. I mean, we have business elsewhere. Is this going to interfere with that? How long do you think this is going to take? With us? Ah, no time at all. I suspect we'll be able to finish this task quite quickly, long before the Guild Pact is ready for our services again. Look at it this way, Clark. We have two weeks, and knowing how the Akron operate, I'd say their clock's a lot shorter than that, even. <sighs> this is why I don't make friends with co-workers. All right, fine. I sort of give a side-eye to Illipel. Look at that. He called us friends. I'm all for celebrating progress to friendship. All right. We will do this for you, mother, not for him. I know you're upset with each other. And that's not to say that I'm not upset with the both of you. But you're young. Now's the time when your blood is up and your heart is pumping fast and you do things based on emotion without thinking about the consequences. Thank you for coming home. Thank you for growing up like that. Hopefully we can get your brother to see things the same way. I do too. Well, I have a gift for you then. Something that may be of use. She picks up a wooden box from behind the throne, and she opens it before you, and inside there appears to be a mace of gnarled roots. Oh, you shouldn't have. Look at that. That's a grave moss gavel, that is. You know what it does? Do I know what it does? Roll arcana or nature? Dirty 20 nature. Okay, yeah, you've heard of these things. They are used by spore druids 
to be able to channel their symbiotic entity into the weapon itself. Oh. To give you the technical description I have here, a Circle of Spores druid who wields this weapon can use a bonus action and expend a spell slot to empower it. The next time they would hit with this weapon, their attack deals additional necrotic damage equal to their Halo of Spores die times the level of spell slot expended. This effect requires concentration and is doubled while the druid embraces their symbiotic entity. Whoa. That's wow. dammies. That's super, dammies. Super spores shillelagh. That's dammies. So you called it a gavel? Is it a one-handed weapon? Is it a- Yeah, it's a mace. It's a grave moss gavel. That's so cool. She presents you with this weapon. I'm honored. I will use it well. Illipel will kind of grab their cloak and say, This seems as though gifts abound. If there's nothing else, I've got some maps and markings that'll help you navigate to the sanctum. She pulls those out from a satchel at her side. The journey will take a few hours, so if you want to be back before night falls, it might be prudent to leave soon. What does that even mean down here? What happens at night? They say predators are more active at night. Even down here? There's really no day? I sort of smirk. Even if you can't see the sun, your body still knows what time it is somewhere. In any event, I think we'll do one even better than leave soon. Let's leave now. All right. Aye, that's wise. Thank you very much for the gift and hospitality for new companions. We'll try our best in this mission. For our house and for you. Make your life worth living, son. And your death worth dying. She smiles at you, and as she goes to hand you over these maps and places them in your hand, she'll also embrace you. Yeah, I hug her back, for sure. And then she goes back and sits on her throne and makes a gesture for you to go on your way. Awesome. Illipel will give a short bow and let's go. On our way out, can I find either one of the stewards or if there were, say, a master at arms in the house at all, I would like to find them? Yeah, you find yours. Very cool, of course. Ah, uh, hey, little Al. I didn't see you last night. Good to hear you're back. Thank you, yours. It's always a pleasure. I've got something here for you. Oh, what have you got for me? I want to show him the Kopesh. Oh, ah, that's... <laughs> that's one of those Dreadhorde weapons. I... Uh, I broke a few of those. <laughs> I remember. We fought well that day. I was thinking you might be the type of person who might know how much it's worth, either to the house or to anybody looking to buy one. It's not necessarily a weapon that any of us can use. He strokes his big green chin, picks at a ward a little. Mm, well, I hear that there's collectors, not our kind, Azorius collectors, looking for that sort of contraband weapon. Maybe I'll rethink using it myself if that's the case, if you know what I mean. Like as not, they'll be the ones to pay you for it. Trying to collect everything up from other worlds, they are. Aye. Strange times, George. Strange times. Aye, other worlds. Who would have thought? And I just give him a nod and head on our way. Good luck, Al! I give him a wave. Thank you, George. That's a great name. Not the size of a mountain, that George. Known him my whole life. And with that, you head out on the... Well, not really the road. You head out on the tunnel on your journey. Yeah, so I'll study the maps and set off in the lead here. Consulting these maps, you see that the Sanctum of the Primordial Gyre is deep below Stonehaven in the chthonic depths forgotten to all but the merfolk who swim the buried oceans. And it's going to take a few hours to make your way through the tunnels and the wormways to get there. Why don't we do this as a group survival check? Are these tunnels naturally occurring, or is this something that Clork might have some knowledge of? Yeah, you can roll uh, engineering or nature. Okay. Only a six. All right, so everyone roll me survival for the first leg of this journey. Survival. Yikes. That's only going to be a 12. 18. It gets better. Don't worry. I got a five. Okay. Cool. Team carry. Whatever. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm nothing if not distracted. All right. I'll say that that average of 12 is enough to make it through the upper layer of the Undercity without running into any trouble. I feel like a 12 is enough for us to pass 
But the entirety of the Undercity is like, I got my eye on you. Is, oh, that, yeah. is that about accurate? Eyes. Many, many eyes. Yes. Keep rolling that shitty. And again, the first level of the Undercity, there's a lot more interchange between the surface and this part of the world. But as you go deeper, it may become harder to navigate. So let's have another round of survival checks. 16. Only a six for me. Fifteen. These rolls are starting to uh, starting to come back around for me. Not great so far. On something that I'm supposed to be excellent at. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, as you're wandering through this deeper level, you come upon a party of crowl scavengers. These insectile creatures turn and look at you. Their big compound eyes, and they chitter a bit. Approach you cautiously. You speak bug? Uh, their native language is... They speak common, but they have their own language called crawl. Yeah. I just, you know, cautiously approach. This our claim. What are you doing to here? We seek to pass through. We wish you no harm. On business, the swarm, and the guild pact. Guild pact? That's why you have brought these outsiders? They're with me, which means, and I sort of give them kind of a stern look, which means they're with us. Roll persuasion. In the meantime, we just, <laughs> the voice casting we got for this campaign Excellent. is incredible. We cast Scala as all the interesting voices. <laughs> That's going to be a flat 14. You go on your way. You not take our claim. Aye, we will, and leave you to it. And the crowd lowers their spear, signals to their other mates to sort of get back to work, and they go back to excavating the wall they were digging in, and you're able to pass. Sure. As we pass, I'm definitely going to check it out, though. Sure, roll investigation. Nah, that's a two. It looks old! <laughs> <laughs> As we walk away, Illithel puts their arm around Alwyn, kind of buddies up. I think it's worth noting that I, from time to time, am capable of keeping my mouth shut when I know better. Just saying I'd like a little bit of credit. And laughs at themselves. Yeah. Credit's all yours. And let's have one more round of survival checks. As you head into the deepest part of the Undersea. How is that even worse? Two. Do I think that we're within an hour of our destination yet? You think if you don't get lost, yes. Okay, all right, that's great, because we're definitely not going to get lost on Jimmy's two and my three. <laughs> Fuck off. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace on us. Okay. And I'm going to make this roll. Mm, 22. Okay. I'd also like to get my mage armor in here, <laughs> if you're allowing. <laughs> I will absolutely allow it. Okay. Clerk senses bad dice roll, and immediately... <laughs> On an average of nine... There's mud there. No, that's a sinkhole. Cloak, watch out for the fallen rock. Don't lean against that stalactite. No, not... Uh, oh. Alan working very hard to keep your party on the right track. Uh, you feel a rumbling in the ground. Uh, can everyone make me a dexterity save? Oh, fuck. Mm. Nat 20. A 17. 12. Okay, you feel this rumbling get closer, and Alwyn, you would recognize a worm is passing very close overhead, but it's causing the pathways to shift, and as this is happening, the tunnel that you're in starts to lose some structural integrity and begins to collapse overhead. You, Alwyn, and Illipel are able to dive out of the way of these falling rocks, but Clork, you get hit by some of them taking 11 points of bludgeoning damage Ooh. and make me one more reflex save. Seven. Seven. Oh, God. And as you try to make it to the other side, you are... Is there anything I can do seeing that, that he's going to take a tumble here? Tell me what you'd like to do. Can I, like, cast a thorn whip to try and give him something to grab onto? Yeah. Yeah, sure. You can do that. All right. I do that. Okay. Roll that save again. It's a 16. Okay. With Alwyn's help, you're able to not get trapped under these falling rocks, even though some of them buffet you. Clark takes his hands out from in front of his eyes. I'm alive. <laughs> that you are. We can't do this without you, Clark. We're going to need you that way. And with that, you feel like you've been cut off from the way you were going and are going to have to find a different path. So I'm going to need one more survival check. Still manatee. Still pass without trace up. Just ready for anything. 
15. It's a two again. Jimmy, god damn it! This is Mount Velas all <laughs> over again. This is Jimmy's dice rolls. It's fine. Last time I got a three, I got better. This time I got Fuck a four. Fuck off! Andy, I have four d20s in play on this table right now. Oh my god. This is just how the clerk's life is is unlucky. It's a blunder. Oh, I should have just cast Enhance Ability on one of you fucking morons. <laughs> uh, after a little while, you take a turn into a cavern, and you see some skeletal creatures in there, some large undead lizards, and they turn and hiss at you. And uh, I guess we're going to roll initiative. Awesome. Surprise combat. 14. 18. Fucking five. <laughs> Clark, you're up first. Never been first in the order before. There's some lizards in here. How far away are they, and, and how many do I see? You see two. They're within range of your spells. Okay. That's what I like to hear. Hold on, what are my spells? Let's open this up with a lightning lore. I don't use that one enough. Okay. All right. So that's going to be a strength saving throw from them, the one closest to me. Okay. It rolled a six on that? Total? Yes. All right. Yeah, it fails. Clork, with his wrench, pulls it back, and almost like he's casting a fishing line, throws an arc of electricity that lassos around this zombified lizard, and he pulls it in like a giant fish. So I'm going to pull it close to me, and it's going to take six lightning damage. All right. And I'm going to disengage as a bonus action. Very good. Presuming you're moving away from where you pulled it? Yes. Very good. Clark pulls one of these zombified lizards right up into your face. Alwyn, you're up now. Well, thank you, Clark. I'm going to hit it with my new Grave Moss gavel. First, I'm going to bonus action shillelagh on it, and then I'm going to swing. That's a 19. Absolutely. And this is going to be 8 bludgeoning and 4 necrotic. Yeah, it takes all of that. And that's my turn. All right. It is going to retaliate. It is going to please make me a constitution saving throw. He gets so fucking excited about that con throw. I really do. And it's never worked. Everything is always saved. And he's like, I'm going to need you to make a con throw. It works sometimes. (laughs) It's worked sometimes, but not this time, because it rolled a 19 plus 3 for a 22. And now it's going to bite you. Okay. Well, it's going to try and get an 11 to hit. It's yeah, going to snap do it. at you placidly with its jaws. Too bad. The other lizard shambles towards your group. I presume, Alwyn, you're like the only one up front? More or less. Okay. Since you're leading the way, this one's going to bite at you as well. Ten will miss. And now it is Illithel's turn. Cool. I'm going to go up to the one that was previously hurt and do some stabby stuff. Be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. Stabby <laughs> to the test. Just no. <laughs> Just no. Want to get sued? I know Elapel's not that kind of bard. Okay. This is 16. Yes, 16 hit. hits, absolutely. Beautiful. And eight piercing damage. Okay. Yeah, it takes that. This one's seeming rather worse for wear. Nito, I would like to... Oh, I'm just going to offhand attack with a dagger. Very good. Another 16. So, yep. Well... It hit the first time, but now its AC goes up. Additional four. This one staggering a bit. We go back to the top with Clark. All right. I'm not going to waste any spell slots. I'm going to run up to the one that looks very hurt and shock and grasp it. I'm just going to basically hit it with my wrench. And as it connects, there's a spark right at that point. 16 to hit? A 16 absolutely hits. Okay. That's seven points of lightning damage. And it can't take reactions. Can't take reactions. If it's dead, I'm guessing it definitely can't take reactions. It's not dead. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it can't take reactions, so I'm just going to saunter away without disengaging. Clark, with the hit-and-run tactics. <laughs> You'll have to see it. Not going to get bit. Alwyn, it is your turn. Great. I'm going to hit him. Try to. Here's with the gavel. Only going to be a 15 this time. Does that still hit? Still hits. So that's... 12 bludgeoning and 4 necrotic. After the bludgeoning, it crumbles into a inert pile of zombie lizard. Awesome. Zombie lizard. Quickly swinging my new gavel out of its corpse, I go ahead and swing my mallet at the other that's still standing. All right. With my offhand. And that's going to be a 17. Still hits. And that's going to be 
Six bludgeoning and three necrotic. Okay, it takes nine damage, and then attempts to bite you. And then attempts to make a con save. Gets an 18 on its con save. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Jeppy's right. I love doing that. It's my favorite thing about this kit. (laughs) You love not ever having an enemy fail their con save against you. Fuck (laughs) off. Eating the one potentially decent attack roll these lizards will have had. Okay, does a 17 hit you, Alwyn? Yes, it does. Okay. Easily. How about you make me a con save? Oh, oh no. Uh Uh-oh. 12. Okay, you take 9 piercing damage, and then you take 8 necrotic damage, as this bite seems to drain some of your life force away through this reanimated creature. Ugh. Does it look like it's healing off of that? It does. Oh, fuck. That was its turn. We are on to Illipel. I'm going to go ahead and attack. 18 ought to do it. And then uh, 5 damage. All right. Anything else? Yeah, offhand. I'm assuming an 11 ain't it. 11 actually does hit. Get the oh, shit. fuck out. All right. They're armor classes 10. They're just big lizards. They're just big lizards, and uh, it's going to take four additional damage. Great. That's Illipel. We go back to Clark. Going to do another one of these hit-and-run shocking grasps. All right. Run right up. Hit it on the kneecap with a wrench, a little bit of a spark, and that's a 24 to hit. <laughs> well, their armor class is 10, but that misses. You've hit by too much. Oh, I'm going to roll anyway. One lightning damage. Oh. Yeah. You give the dinosaur a frickin' bit of balloon static. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, back to you. Real quick, hair follicles don't preserve in fossils, so we don't know if dinosaurs had hair. Scala, dinosaurs having hair in Ravnica, canon? Yes or no? And then if yes, does its hair rise when Jimmy does the balloon static? Dinosaurs on Ravnica canonically feathered, I believe. Based on, like, I think it's Urban... I don't fucking know the name of the card. It's like one of the cards that came out in Modern Horizons depicting a dinosaur on Ravnica. I really didn't expect you to actually have a factoid about that. I thought you would just make up an answer, but... No, they are feathered. Do the feathers rise? I guess the remnants of the feathers stand up a little bit. Thank you. I'm glad we know that. All right, I'm just going to hit him again. 12. 12 hits. In most cases, 12 is greater than 10. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and use a first level spell slot on this Grave Moss Halo. Okay. So that should be an extra 2d4. Okay. So that's nine bludgeoning and ooh, double fours, 12 necrotic. Okay. Thing looking pretty bad. Going to randomly generate a target here. This one's going to go after you, Illipel. Please try and make a constitution saving throw. Okay, that's a six total. I don't know if it's resistant to these or not, but that is another six necrotic. It hasn't appeared to resist necrotic damage. Okay. Yeah, it's going to try and bite Illipel. Does a 15 hit Illipel. It ties thanks to the new cloak. Ah, alas. Could you make me a constitution save? Oh, that's right. 17. Okay, you take 10 points of piercing damage, but no necrotic damage. Fucking ten? Ten piercing damage from the bite. These are large size lizards. That tracks. Big teeth. Okay. And that was its turn, and we're back to Illipel. Yeah, I'm gonna stab it now. Ah, uh, 19 on the dice, not a 20. But it is 11 piercing damage. Okay. On its very last legs, as we go back to Clark. No, we don't go back to anyone until I do my dagger stuff. And that'll also hit 14. We'll hit. Mm-hmm. Wow, it is three fours in a row. That's another four. Okay, would you like to add any flourish to your dispatching of this lizard? I nice. would like to add flourish. I am going to, with my rapier, stab it at its spine. And as it does that, it'll open its mouth in reaction, and I will just thrust my dagger into its open throat and kill it. Very grisly. The animating force behind these necrolisks fizzles away as they slump down inert. Yo, that's a cool ass name. Necrolisks. Necrolisks. That's good. Yes. It's good stuff. And you're free to proceed along your way. Rather savage of the bell. Well done. So you've cleared out this cavern if you'd like to take some time to gather your strength here. Was it just me or that combat felt rather swift? I do suspect we're getting a little bit better at this. 
It's rewarding to see camaraderie come full circle. I think we'll be even better as the days push on. And anyone that wants to use hit dice, you can go ahead and add three healing to that hit dice. Nice. That'll get me somewhere good. I'm going to use at least one. See where we get. Cool. That'll be all of my health. Cool. So I'm at full, but I don't have any time. All right. Resting after that encounter, you feel renewed and able to make the hopefully last leg of this journey. Everybody roll me survival. So Clark spent most of the first part of his life in facilities that often have tile floors and it's like almost like clean room. Not a lot of, you know, natural features. And so I rolled a five on this survival check. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. No reason he'd be good at this. No. 24. 16. All right. Let us compile these numbers. You are able to make your last leg of the journey through the deep undercity and approach a great green glowing hemispherical pod after a long journey through this series of descending tunnels. You hear a faint trickle of water and you see several subterranean streams flow around this lab through canals dug in the shape of a spiral. The air smells uncomfortably sterile as you approach. Feeling good. Might smell nice, but not necessarily an indication of pleasant company. I'm going to make sure I have both the gavel and my mallet shillelagh as we approach. Okay. And what's everyone's passive perception? Mine is 16. 10. 13. Okay. On a 16, you can hear what sound like the sounds of fighting inside as you get closer. Sounds like fighting. I will approach cautiously, sort of leading the party still. Is there like an entryway into this thing? So it's like a big dome, and then there's an arched tunnel leading in, and it's got one of those green, gooey, sterile membranes in front of it. Oh. I would have gotten my wild shape back on that short rest anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and say I recast Symbiotic Entity. Okay. And it definitely sounds like this conflict is happening inside. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. I suppose it's now or never. So never is an option then? (laughs) Shaking my head, I walk through the membrane. You pass through the gelatinous green membrane. You're in a tunnel. You can see the glowing green light of the biodome ahead of you. There's another membrane separating this tunnel from that. Does it look like there's any other ways in or just this one entryway? So from the outside, it looks like there's streams that are spiraling around this complex. Could be a way in if you could swim through them. Okay, we'll just keep going forward. Okay, you pass through the second membrane. You step into a research chamber, tinted green beneath the biodome. The twisting streams around the lab spiral out from the central pedestal above which floats... Uh, For you, Alwyn, a familiar sight, a magical artifact in the shape of a spiral twisting ever outward. You also see the familiar appearance of Edric, though it's clear he shed much of his undercity attire for the sterile doctor's garb of the Combine, though he still wears his hair long and bound in vines. He's standing back to back with a dark-skinned, bare-chested, save for a pair of bandoliers filled with various vials and beakers. Elf, who is clutching a pair of great swords in his four muscular arms. They are surrounded on all sides by elven assassins with the mark of the Akron. Let's roll initiative. Oh, fuck. Dramatic stuff. 21. There it is. 22. Also a 21. Ah, good. You go before me, because I don't know what to do in this situation. (laughs) You think I fucking know what to do? Well, he's your former brother. Oh, my God. Uh, We're going to have to help them. I see what you've done. Dastardly DM. That's me, very dastardly. And these are these are Akron, these are Golgari assassins, not Demir yes. assassins, okay. They appear Akron assassins. Very cool. Coming upon this scene, I just shout out, Idric, what have you done? Okay, first up, one of the Akron is going to go. They're going to make some attacks at Idric. One of them, a natural 20. He turns to look at you. Brother, how did you find me here? And as he's looking at you, this Akron makes its move leaps across one of these streams right next to him, strikes right into his neck, 
with one of these short blades Fuck. dealing eight points of piercing damage. Edric needs to make a con save. And that will actually do it. So he's not poisoned, but does still take three points of poison damage. Looking pretty bloody from this hit. That was the Akron assassin. Now the four-armed elf is going to go. Seeing this assassin close with them, he jabs a needle into one of his forearms, screams in rage, and then swings twice. Okay, that's actually pretty bitchin'. Okay. <laughs> They're fucking juicing. One of these is... Yeah, 27 to hit, but the other is a 14, which will not... Gotta love the old fight yourself four turns. This Akron takes a pretty big hit from one of these swords, but remains standing. Illipel, now it's you. Yep, one second. Okay, sorry, I was just writing out some spells that Mm -hmm. I got. So I'm a little unclear at this point. The assassins, go for the assassins. Okay, what are they holding as weapons? Short swords. I think I'm going to use my warlock spell slot. All right. To cast heat metal on one of the short swords. Excellent. I'll do it on a full health, like one that hasn't been attacked yet. Okay. So it takes 11 fire damage. Okay. And then now it has to make a con save, or it can drop its weapon. It's going to drop its weapon. The elf turns in pain and tosses the short sword into one of these streams spiraling out from this central platform. That's pretty tricky. That spell will never miss. Indeed it will not. Like, wow, that doesn't take a a throw or a... a, Yeah, it's pretty good. And then I'll use my bonus action to say, we're here for you, my friend. We've rallied to your cause. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, oh, see, I'm not done. I'm not. I- Illipel always has more to say. Okay, okay. <laughs> Take inspiration from this. I will follow behind you. And I'll cast Bardic Inspiration on Alwyn. Yo. Okay. Alwyn, it's your turn. How many assassins are there? Four. Okay. I will go for the one that attacked Edric. Okay. So... The terrain in here is a little hard to navigate. You said it's like a big spiral of, like, streams, right? And there's walkways going over them, but to sort of run up and do something might require you to move a little slower or to make an acrobatics check. If I can get there with a check, I'm going to try and do that. Okay, roll me acrobatics then. Uh Uh-oh, crit fail. Oh, dear. I'm going to use the inspiration. Excellent. So that was... Three plus six, nine. Nine? Right, uh, the Bardic is just a D6 right now. Oh, I thought you were going to use your D20 inspiration. Oh, nine. oh no, I'm going to use that one. Sorry. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to use that one right now. Here we go. And I'm going to use the other Bardic anyways. <laughs> okay, thank God. 15. Yeah, you're able to nimbly navigate these walkways without falling into the streams and get up into this guy's face. That was an 8 plus 2 plus 5. Wow. Yeah, saying nothing to Edric, I'm going to hit this guy twice. All right. 17 with the gavel. Hits. 10 bludgeoning and 6 necrotic. This guy barely clinging to life. Second swing. An 18. Hits. 6 bludgeoning, 3 necrotic. He goes down. Just mercilessly swinging at these assassins. Definitely with a scorn look. I just end by staring directly at Edric. Okay. Clark, we're over to you. Who just dropped? One of the assassins. And there's still three assassins standing. Mm Mm-hmm. Who's taking damage of them? There's one with a blistered hand that Illipel cast heat metal on. And the other two are totally untouched. Untouched. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast a twinned chaos bolt at two of these guys, one of them being the one who doesn't have a weapon. All right. Very spicy. Roll your attack rolls. The first one. That's a 16 to hit. Hits. Okay. And I'm going to roll the second one before rolling damage for you. The second one is probably not going to hit with an 11. Uh, that'll miss. Okay, so the first one hits, and that is... Let's make that force damage. That's 11 force damage. Okay. Anything else from you, Clark? I'm going to try to get a little closer. Okay. Go ahead and make me an acrobatics check. It's a nat 20 plus two. You can be wherever you want to be. Okay. Little goblin gymnast over here. Ah, now he's found his footing. So I'm going to get up as close as I can to where, like, the big action's happening, and I'm going to hide as a bonus action. Okay. With a 21. 
Nice. All right. Clark nimbly somersaults towards the central pedestal and just disappears behind it. Let's see if these assassins manage to see you. No, they do not. Now the one who is pretty grievously injured and only has one sword, <laughs> they're going to huck a couple of daggers at you, Elipel. Bring it on. Okay. Uh, one is a 20 to hit. No. And one is a 15 to hit. You take five and five points of piercing damage, ten total, over two attacks, and make me a constitution save. A 19. You take half the poison damage and are not poisoned, so you take one point of poison damage. Yeah, damn right. So, that was them. Ah, now it's Edric's turn. Edric's going to attempt to move over to the injured assassin. They do so pretty handily. He's going to swing the rapier. And hits with a 19, and will deal six points of piercing damage. And then, as a bonus action, we'll Misty Step back to your side, Alwyn. Yeah, that's about right. I just give him a gruff look, still not saying anything. Okay, and now the final two assassins. One is going to come for Edric, and one is going to go for the doctor. The one attacking Edric, I'm going to Halo Spores. Okay, rolls a con save. Rolls a 20 on its con save. <laughs> Every fucking time. Good stuff. Makes its two short sword attacks. Let's see. 20 might hit. He's going to use shield. You see a blow that's going to come in and... Fucking called it. Hit Edric. Edric throws up a warbling bubble of energy deflecting the blow. Uh, if you've entrenched the color of your shield. The other one goes for the doctor. Hitting with one attack. Eight points of piercing damage. And Dr. Tugenti makes it. Con save easily. So it takes four points of poison damage. And now it is back to the top. It's Dr. Tugenti's turn. Well, well, well. This just got a little more interesting. And he lets out a battle cry. And swings three times with great swords in either hand. Recklessly deals. 47 slashing damage over three swings to this one assassin. What the fuck? Absolutely dismembering them. Holy shit. I have a really bad feeling about this. Delapel, over to you. So there are two assassins left. Are they positioned near each other? No, they are not. One is up in Edric's face and the other is still in the middle of the room. And that's the one who threw some daggers at you. All right, uh, to the one that threw daggers, I'll say, you attempt to cast me down from far away, yet nothing has happened. I stand here, ready to still take you on. And I'll cast Dissonant Whispers. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 11 plus, plus nothing. I think that's going to fail. Each indeed a duty, it will fail. Cool. That is 14 psychic damage. This elf screams, holds their head as black light pours out of their eyes and mouth, and they slump to the ground dead. You damn right. This is too easy. I know what's going to happen next. Yeah, I do too. I, I make no mistake. I know. You should coming. fucking insight that guy if you think you know what's coming. Alwyn, you're up. How big is this guy with the four arms? <laughs> elf sized? Like a medium sized humanoid? I'm gonna contemplate that thought as I swing the gavel at this last assassin. Okay. 19. 19 absolutely hits. And I will use the gavel's halo on this for 8 bludgeoning and 10 necrotic. Okay. A solid hit, really knocking the wind out of this person. Over to Clork. Clark's going to pop out of hiding and do a shocking grasp on that one. It's a 14 to hit. 14 absolutely hits. That's five lightning damage. Okay. And I'm going to back up, not as a bonus action, because they can't take reactions. And I think I'm going to burn two more sorcery points to cast this Witch Bolt as a bonus action, as a second level spell. Very nice. Here we go. I don't have a good feeling about this roll. Ah! Okay, that's a 23 to hit. Hell yeah. Very much hits. 
All right, so I point this wrench at it, and this square waveform of electricity arcs out towards them. That's 13 lightning damage. Okay. Edric is going to swing his sword and miss. The assassin gets one more turn, going to attempt to disengage as a bonus action and start making for the door. Uh, start of their turn, uh, I'm going to try and halo. Yeah. Con save. Does a 12 pass? Nope. Six necrotic. They fall down, and as they do, the artifact in the center of the room sort of pulses. And the dead bodies of these Akron assassins start to twist and pulse their biomatter being plasmified as it spirals around. What's happening? What is this? <laughs> the gyre isn't complete. It's reacting. It's looking for its missing pieces. And the ball of fleshy plasma Gross. coalesces in the center of this room. It sort of wrenches and twists into this strange, monstrous creature, amalgam of many merged corpses. It wails horribly. Everyone, make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, God. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, cool. Dirty 20. Three. <laughs> oh, no. Not Clark's night. <laughs> 16. <laughs> okay. Let me roll for Edric. And... Oh, dear. What's Dr. Zhivago get? Dr. Taganti got a... <laughs> got a 13, which doesn't pass. And... It's not very doctorly. There's some fucking we'll right. Get your fucking degree, mister. I thought we were going to have to fight this guy, so... Edric fails at that. When their turn comes around, they're going to oh, determine no. their actions randomly. Oh, no. As they're confused by the scream of this creature. No. Clark also. And Clark as well. I'm just fucking holding my head. This, this is what you want? Edric is kind of just holding their ears and shaking his head. So we're back to the top of the order. Dr. Tiganti rolls a d8. Moving in a randomly determined direction. Where? Where did everything go? What? The four-armed barbarian runs forward, falling into one of the streams in his confusion. Illipel, we're over to you. Well, I'm still across the ravine, right? Uh, yes, you're still a ways away from this, but it's no more than, I would say, 60 feet away. It's a sphere? It's a flesh amalgam, is how I would describe it at this point. It is amorphous in shape. I mean, should we attack it? It doesn't seem friendly. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have to fight it. Does it seem like it moves a lot? It hasn't moved yet. Let's fucking do some cloak of daggers on this shit. I'm gonna put a cloud of daggers right where this thing is. Okay. Lapel will kind of like do a twirl with the cloak and this sort of misty form with daggers all abound will head and fix itself in the area where the amalgam is. Try not to get too close for just a little while. You may get a bit stung. And that's it. I'm just going to do that. I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't want to jump over the ravine or anything like that. I'm going to stay put. Okay. Alwyn, it's your turn. It's near us, right? Yeah, it's near you. My first instinct, honestly, is to just grab Edric and run, but I will put myself between him and this amalgam, and I will attack. That's only a 14. 14 hits. It's just a blob of flesh. <laughs> okay. 12 bludgeoning and 5 necrotic. Okay. 17 total. Alright, I'll just make it offhand. I'm not gonna do anything special here. 13 to hit. Hits. 6 bludgeoning, 6 necrotic. Okay, another 12. Doing some work on this monstrosity. Clark, could you roll me a d8, please? 7. 7. Roll me a d6. 6. Is the device still visible, or did it get swallowed by this thing? No, it's still sort of pulsing above this creature. The creature kind of just formed before the pedestal on which this thing rests. It's above it. Okay. Okay. What sort of melee weapons does Clark have? Clark has two daggers. Okay. Clark, in your confusion, you swing a dagger at the creature. Oh, it's convenient. 22 to hit. 22 absolutely hits. Nice. Four points of piercing. Okay, and make me another wisdom save at the end of your turn. Fifteen. You are able to clear your mind from the effects of this unholy sound that is emanating from this flesh amalgam. Let me roll for... Nope, Dr. Taganti still fails. 
Edric now going to randomly decide what he's going to do. Okay. Edric runs for the exit. Could have been a lot worse. Wise choice. Still in their blade dance, still making their acrobatics check pretty easily. That's Edric. Now the flesh amalgam goes. Well, first, it's going to take... Going to take damage. Going to take damage. Dammy, dammy, dammies. Um, it is 14 piercing damage. 14 piercing damage. Wow. Wow, ah, that's pretty fucking good. I'm also going to use Halo. Con save, please. Okay. Uh, it's con save is a 12. I don't think that does it. Fails. Five necrotic damage. Okay, so 19 total damage. It sounds like it. All right, now it goes. It's going to open and make some sort of bite attack, you would presume, with, like, the jagged fragments of bone sticking out of it oh, at God. either Clork or Alwyn. At Clork. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I've rolled a natural 20. Yeah, of course you did. I feel so bad about it. I do, because I'm now going to roll 10d6. What? You know? Jimmering Mouthers have crazy bite attacks. It's been an honor, my good friend. <laughs> I honestly thought we were oh, fighting. Yeah, the, I know. I know what you thought. It's like watching the last season of Breaking Bad. I'm like, this motherfucker is going to say everything he thinks is going to happen before it happens. That is how we watched Breaking Bad together. We, we watched the episode together. The episode. Yeah. And I kept telling you, shut the fuck up or I will leave. 10d6 uh, is going to be an average of 35 mm -hmm. points of damage. So. <laughs> you like in your odds, Jimmy? <laughs> Just crunch some numbers real quick ahead of this to see what we're... It could very well actually kill him. So what are we looking at here? I rolled below average. 32. <laughs> Clark's gone. Is Clark dead? How much health did you have left? 26. No, Clark is not dead. Oh, is that full? Okay. Clark is very unconscious, though. Absolutely <gasps> slammed by the bite of this flesh amalgam, falling unconscious. Ow. And then it emits a bunch of bile and pus and blood. Alan, could you make me a dexterity wow. save, please? Okay. If Clark has to do that, too, he... Auto fails that. It will not affect Clark. Clark's been through enough. Thank you very fucking much. <laughs> Jesus. Uh oh. Yeah, we're off the clock now. It's not even covered by workers' compensation. <laughs> hey, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> That's another nat one. Okay, you are blinded. Mother. F okay. By this gross emission awesome. from this awesome. creature. Not very sanitary, are we? Back to Dr. Taganti. Dr. Taganti randomly determines his action. Dr. Taganti treads water in the stream <laughs> confusedly. Cool. Fuck him. What a learned man. <laughs> Still unable to shake off this confusion. Illipel, it's now your turn. Uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Clork. Yeah, that's my bonus action. BTW. Okay. Clork gets... Very nice. Nine hit points Ooh. restored. And then for my action, action. I can't believe I let you talk me into this. <laughs> I'm just going to throw a vicious mockery at it and wisdom saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw. It rolled a 13 on its wisdom save. That fails 1d4 damage. Four. Again, four all the time. Four damage and disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes. All right. Your, yeah. your d4s are hot. I got several here. I've been using the same one with the exception of that cloud of daggers. Alwyn, you're up. You are blind. Yeah, I know. But I'm still more or less near or next to Clork. Yes. You would sort of have a sense of where he fell. Okay. As a bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and conjure my healing spirit in between Clork and I. Okay. See the spectral wolf avatar take shape as I throw up a cloud of twinkling sporific energy, and I'm going to take another swing, even though I'm blind. Okay. Roll with disadvantage, then. I... Right. Okay, well... The disadvantage cancels that nat 20, Oof. but that's still a 17. Very much a hit. Cool. One on the D8, that's five bludgeoning and three necrotic. Okay. How's it looking? Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm blind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know. Clark, you see this thing. Most of the fleshy clumps have been hacked away from it and are spiraling downstream out of the lab. There doesn't appear to be much remaining of this creature. How do I use this healing spirit? Is that uh, a start of your turn, you heal d6. Yeah, it just happens. That's a one. Right. That's a ten. So 
Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to wing a chaos bolt at it. All right. That's a 22 to hit. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to make this psychic damage, and it's going to take 18 points of psychic damage. Clark, would you like to add a little flourish to your dispatching of this creature? Yes, but I should not have chosen psychic damage. Make it gross. Okay, yeah, so... Clerk points his wrench, like he always does, at this creature. He is bleeding and hurt in a lot of different places, and with one last motion, hurls a chaos bolt at this fleshy creature, and it is a dead-on strike, and at first it seems like nothing happens, but then this creature starts to vibrate slowly at first and then more quickly, and can I make it explode? Yeah, you can make it explode. Okay. Nice. <laughs> And it explodes with a deafening pop, and we are showered in blood and guts and disgusting bile and little bits of sinew. Yeah, that's pretty gross. A vile shower of viscera covers the area as Clark destroys this creature. He remains washed away by this spiraling stream. The strange ululations emanating from it subside and Dr. Tiganti and Idric come to their senses. Dr. Tiganti slings his swords across his back, climbs out of the stream and says... Welcome to my lab. Who the crocs are you? I'm going to punch him in the face. Okay, make an attack roll. Nat 20. Not even kidding. Okay. A whopping two damage. <laughs> Does a 20... Yeah, Fuck right off. You. Fuck off. He backhands you with a pair of his arms for five points of damage. Okay, fine. Well, now that we've properly acquainted ourselves... We're taking Idric. Our business is not with you. We'll also be taking that. And I look up to the device. <laughs> no, the Winding Gyre cannot leave the Sanctum. Do you want more of those things? What are you doing here? What is your intent with this foul machination? It's not foul, brother. It's just incomplete. Edric walks towards your group. There was a god long ago, the primordial enigma. It was worshipped by the druids and the shamans of the gyreclade long ago, before they were even part of the combine. It was a creature of perfection, of life and its desire. Perfection, life. You call that what we just fought? Perfection and life. No, I, I told you it's incomplete. That's why I brought it here. So that it could be properly contained where it belongs. You to come with me now. There will be no further questions about it. Roll intimidation. Flat 16. Okay, he's definitely intimidated by you. I'm guessing you aren't with sort of vaguely gestures at the gore splattered all over the ground. So mother sent you. Aye. Then I'll come back with you. But please, the gyre cannot go where there's an abundance of death. It will you see what it does. If that stays here. When Vraska will send more assassins, they know where you are. They know where it is. <laughs> Simica can try and defend you all at once. This good doctor can laugh all he wants, but there will be more. I can handle a few more assassins. And perhaps the ones that will not return will convince them to be a little more diligent before they send more minions to die. I spit at the ground and say, And for what? For what? The Winding Gyre is only part of the primordial enigma. It represents life's desire to grow and spread beyond control. It is the spiral twisting ever outward. But there is a second portion, the tightening gyre, a spiral twisting ever inward, representing life's ability to specialize into an evolutionary niche. Together, they formed a godlike being, a truly perfect life form. But both pieces were lost to history. I do agree that life has a way of proliferating almost in abundance and excess sometimes even in chaos. But I challenge you to consider the fact that you yourself are keeping a tight grip on the evolutionary course. Makes one truly wonder if this is in reverie 
of life itself, or some sick bastardization of it. As someone who has let their arrogance run amok, I would caution you, Doctor. If you keep about your ways, the assassins will grow more numerous, and that thing will grow more fed, and it'll come for you. And then it'll have no controller, no master. It'll be creation gone afoul. That is why your brother was wise to bring it to a safe place. We are not so different, he and I. It is easy to be told to accept the cycle of life and death by those who are long lived. But if you only have a century of years, then what? You would try and see yourself live another century, then another, and another? Well, then you're not much different than those who have their longer lives. No, then you're worse. You would seek to break that cycle rather than bend it, wouldn't you? I seek to know what is beyond the cycles we know. One wonders if a more innocuous path into study of genetics would have suited you better than playing about with this amalgamated mess you've created here. I'll offer you a free blood sample. Illipel says as they extend their arm. What are you doing, Illipel? I'm not a vampire, like one of those parasites in that bank above. I don't want your blood. I don't want blood. I just want to see the primordial enigma restored. I've heard enough of this. We're done here. Good day, Doctor. All right. With that, you all leave. Unless... I mean, at this point, Alwyn honestly doesn't care if the relic stays or leaves. Mm -hmm. The guy just told him it's got to stay here. So, like, if he really wants it, he can come back and get it. Yeah, and this this fucker can just die alone in this cave for all I care. There was nothing left of any of those assassins. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else to even bother with here other than as I'm walking back towards the entrance. Mm, that's really stupid, but I really want to do it. Uh, do what you want to do. Uh, we're going to be here all night. I don't want to fight this guy. You don't. This guy will fucking destroy us. Two great swords. Probably. Probably would. If your character is even going to, like, turn back as we walk away, Illipel will intervene. (laughs) Nope. He already said his piece. He's not going to look back. As we walk away, Illipel will whisper to Alwyn, for what it's worth, I wanted to kill him, too. Perhaps we'll find time later. I'm never coming back here. (laughs) I could honestly care less about that, Doctor. Yeah, okay. My hand was on my ice knife for the relic itself. You don't understand, Al. Come on, come with me. There's a lift that'll take us closer to the surface. I want to insight check that, actually. Yeah, sure. 17. He appears to be telling the truth. I don't like that. What did he say again? I'm sorry. He said there's a lift that'll take us closer to the surface. That makes sense. If it goes into the combine... We're not taking it. There's only a few that know of it. All of this stuff has been abandoned. It should be safe if you want to avoid the Simic. And it took us a while to get down here. I know you may be cautious to take this on faith. Can I also make an insight check or whatever? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, that is a 19. Appears to be telling the truth. I have a way of reading people most of the time. I believe your brother's telling the truth. And if not... We've been through much worse. Let's take this on faith, shall we? All right. We'll take the traitor's way up. Thank you for coming to my rescue, Al. I didn't do it for you. But you did it, and that's what matters. Come on. And he leads you to a pod-shaped tube-like elevator, steps inside. He sticks his hand into the gel that makes up this pod, focuses for a moment... And you begin to rise. You rise through uh, this dark tubular tunnel and emerge several minutes later in a cavern that you might not immediately recognize, but you can probably find your way back to Stonehaven or wherever you want to go from here. Yeah, straight back. Roll me survival with advantage at this point. Dirty 20. Yeah, you get back to Stonehaven. Before we approach, I turn to Edric. Our mother might welcome you back to our house. Grateful and glad for it. But I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, you are a traitor, and you are not my brother. And I keep walking. Traitor to what? Traitor to me! I can't help that you're short-sighted. Without turning back. And you're what? Smarter than me? Smarter than mother? What has that gotten you? Into a load of trouble? With power you don't even understand? And what do you think would have happened if we'd brought that up here, with all the dead things around? 
There'd be all manner of monstrosities roaming about. And we could have fought them together. At least in the Combine, they know what that magic is. It's hard They to- don't know what it is. They may think they understand it. They may think that by solving this great mystery, they would unlock the secrets of this world. Can't you see that's a lie? What would it give them if not more pain? If not more suffering? For a goal they cannot achieve. Death needs life just as much as life needs death. You know this, and you took it anyway. He pulls out a notebook of his, one of many leather-bound journals he carries on his person, and flips through it. I don't claim to know everything, but I do know that not everything we've been taught all our lives is right. It's important to ask questions. It's important to learn. Not even the foundations of this world are firm. There are beings from beyond the stars who try to come and kill us all. Before that, what makes you think the laws of life and death are writ in stone? What makes you think that stone is eternal? Just trying to find answers, brother. That's all I want. I think there's something more out there, and I want to know what it is. If you can't forgive me for that, then I guess we aren't brothers, are we? I turn back, trying to hide a bit of sadness. Stone bends to the wind. But until you walked away from me in that cave, I thought that trust was the only thing in this world that couldn't be broken between brothers. And I walk into Stonehaven. Okay. He follows. You enter the audience chamber. Your mother is waiting for you. Svogthir's blood, you made it back. I kneel. I bow. I bow. Idric kneels. She walks up and smacks him one. Go to your chamber. We'll deal with the mess you've made later. Mother, I, I said go. As you say. And he stands and walks toward his room. Thank you. You did well. I hope you didn't run into too much trouble. What did you find? The Queen's Akrons were already on him when we got there. As I feared. The trick was hard. Indeed, it's quite deep in the Undercity. There was someone with him, Simic Doctor, and the relic. It's some sort of piece in a machine. He called it a puzzle. Incomplete, but one of two, if my understanding of it is to be correct. It was horrific what it was capable of. The bodies of the assassins swallowed up and transformed into a monstrous beast. Foul and terrifying, otherworldly. I tried to take it, but this doctor said that if it came closer to death, closer to what we know as our own, that that power would grow worse and dark. Some things are best buried, aren't they? Aye. I know the queen will still come for it, let alone Edric. Well, I think we can do something about that last part. Yours! The troll walks in carrying a large cloth bundle, about human-sized, slaps it on the ground... Pulls the cloth wrapping off of it, and there's a pretty well-crafted statue that looks just like your brother, in a pose of terror and surprise. Oh, mother, I should have known. Stick that out in the garden. Let things calm down for a while before we make our next move. Stay here as long as you like, Al, friends of Stonehaven. We... we have other business, but I think we'll at least stay the night. All right. We've got some sausages of dubious origin I've been saving for a special occasion. (laughs) I think it's special enough these days. Thank you for helping us piece this family back together, even if there's still healing needs to be done. Like I said, it wasn't for him. That's all I have to say. This is a place where we can end the scene. Are we going to... Are we about to do a long rest or something? Uh, yeah. We'll take a long rest. Let me... Real quick. I'm going to message you. Yeah, sure. There's some other sorts of business that I want to take care of, just like normal downtime stuff. You will, during these two weeks, receive... Clark, you will receive as the leader of this group 36 Xenos and 90 Zibs at the end of the two weeks. Ooh. And Alwyn and Illipel, you will each receive 29 Xenos, 52 Zibs. What is this shit? Wait, so we receive it right now, or...? Uh, this is going to be at the end of the two okay. weeks. Illipel, assuming you go back to the Violet Rose, there will be two parcels waiting for you. Okay. One with seven doses of Eau de Violet HB764C, <laughs> with a note of gratitude from Golival, and another smaller parcel with half a gram of dried mushroom, with a note of gratitude from Lana, saying... Take half at a time, 
Unless you want things to get really wild. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Last time I did that, uh, I was trying to watch the High School Musical trilogy, but it didn't work. And then I ended up just watching the first High School Musical. I've never heard it referred to as a trilogy before. Disgusting. Of course. I just messaged you. Okay. First of all, A, is that cool? B, should we handle that on mic? Let me take a look at it. <laughs> uh, roll me your proficiency, on your tool proficiency for that. What it, uh, how does that work? Roll dexterity plus proficiency and send me the result. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Yeah, you do that, and you're free to do with that item whatever you wish. Love. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Okay, cool. I have got it written. I am good to go. Okay. What the that's, fuck? That's perfect. Yeah. I guess what? that's a good spot to end tonight. Did you just steal something from Sto- <laughs> from my fucking house? What did you uh, do? <laughs> so, with this mystery, this feels like a good place to end the session. Um, oh my god. You're going to get fucking petrified, dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I will not save you. <laughs> I almost like, want to tell him, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm sure you'll tell him soon enough. Save it. Fucking save it, dude. I'm going to get you so bad. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.